In this InVivo 10 demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use a text search query. To find the text search query, go up to the Query tab and you'll find the one that says Text Search. You're going to click on that. And you'll see that we have a, a dialog box that says Text Search Query. And you're going to type your search term right in here. What a text search query does is that it searches for a particular word or phrase in the text sources of your data. It could be in the transcript, it could be in a document, it could be in a, in a log that goes with a picture. Of course, it can't search images, only text. So we're going to type in our text search. In this case, I'm going to type in the word write, W-R-I-T-E. And I'm just going to tell it to run. So you see here, I have the results of my text search in preview and I get a summary. It tells all the documents that had a reference that matched my text search. I can click the reference tab and see the actual references here, what the data units are. I can click the text tab and see which documents they were part of. Um, in this case, there is actually a video source and we can see our word right here in in the transcript that goes with the video. And then the last thing that you see is what's called a word tree. And you can click on any of the branches and you can sort of track along how the, how the word was embedded in context. So the family response journal, I write what my son says and so forth. And the reason this is so helpful is you get sort of a visual image of what goes with the word write. So you may see some associations among what comes before or after write. So why would you use a text search in qualitative research? It gives you the ability to search for one word or for a phrase, and you don't have to have coded for that phrase by looking at each individual unit and attaching a code. It's a way to mechanically begin to gather together units of data that relate to a particular concept. Now, because it searches for words or phrases, you may miss some things that are actually in the data that are important, and you may include in, into the search some things that you don't want, but there's always a way to get rid of those by uncoding them if you decide that you want them later. So this is a way to do a first pass through the data to find units that are related to a topic or idea. A second way I use this, and this is a, a very common way for me to use this in, in my research, it's a quick way to find an item for, in a large data set. So for instance, if you know that on a particular day you talked about pumpkins, but you can't remember which day that is, and you, you, otherwise you'd have to sort of search through a lot of different data files, you can just simply use text search, type in the word pumpkin, and it's going to re return to you all the sources that have the word pumpkin in them. And then if you look at the documents, you can probably very quickly figure out which is the one that you're looking for. So it's sort of a way to locate things in your data. The other way I use this a lot is I often have field notes that give data about a lot of different children in a classroom, but sometimes I want to track an individual across time and I want to find all the instances of that child in the data. And the easiest way to do that is to do a text search for the child's name and the resulting node will be at least a first pass locating each document where the child uh, child's activities have been recorded because the child's name appears. And then, of course, we, we can spread the data to find larger chunks that deal with that child. So now we're going to run another text search just so we have an opportunity to look at the, at the dialog box in more detail. So let's go back to the Query tab, click Text Search, and the Text Search Query box opens. Notice at the top there's a box that says Add to Project. This is a place where we can add the query syntax and save it in the project so that we can use it again if we'd like to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I need to give it a name. I'm going to call this Write Search. I click on my text search criteria tab and I'm, I'm going to type in Write. But you know, I really would like to get Write and Writes and Wrote. And in order to do that, I'm going to actually use a wildcard. So I'm going to use WR and then I'm going to go to the special menu and click the wild card, any one character, that's a question mark, it'll just put it in for me. Then I'm going to click T and E. So I should with this get write and write and wrote both in this case. Um, I'm going to ask it to search in text and I'm going to say all sources, but you could decide to limit the types of sources. 
and if I want to just go ahead and save the query without running it, I click OK, but if I'd like to run it now, I'm going to click Run. Before I do that, I want to go back to the query options and look at one more thing, and that is where do I want the results to go? Do I want them to open only in preview, which means I'll be able to look at them, but they won't be saved. Once I close, close out of preview, they'll, they will be gone. Um, or would I rather go ahead and create the results as a new node? If I create it as a node, by default, the node will be saved in the, in the queries folder under results right here. But I can, of course, cut and paste that node and put it into my regular hierarchy if I'd like to. And of course, once it's a regular node, you can code to that node. As long as it's in the queries folder in results, you cannot code to that node. So this time I'm going to say create results as a new node. And um, the location is going to go to the results folder. And I'm going to leave the name as write search. And one reason to leave that term search there is it makes it really clear to me that this was created mechanically. There could be some things in it that, that I don't want in it and that I'm going to need to clean that up. And once I do clean it up, I can remove the, the term search from the label of the node if I'd like to. So I'm going to tell it to run it now. Now I'm going to open this so we can see it just a little better. And again, we see the summary. Uh, let's look at the summary. So actually, you see now we've got a few more sources that, that have a reference. Let's look, look at our references and see if we can see if we got it, how this caught in. Here we have write and wrote. Let's see, we've got more write, wrote. So we are catching in both, just as I had hoped I'd be able to do. Okay. And you can see which text sources that comes from and which video sources. Okay. So let's look in the Queries folder and take a look at what, what we find there. Here we have the name of our Write Search Query, the one that we decided to add to the project. Let's look in the Results folder. And there we find our Write Search node that we're looking at. So it's opened here. Um, if I decided that I wanted to make that part of my regular node hierarchy, all I would need to do is click on it and cut and go back to nodes, open them up, and I would just paste it right in here. And now write search becomes one of the nodes in my regular hierarchy. So one final trick that I want to show you is that you can do text searches that are more complex, that look for more than one term. So go back to the Queries tab, click Text Search, and in our box we're going to type in write as we did the first time, but this time we want to find any source, any item that has both write and draw in the same source. So I want to use the Boolean operator AND. I can either type that in or I can click the special button and it'll, it'll put it in for me. And then put in write and draw. And if I run that, we actually get two sources that have both write and draw in them. Let's look at the references. Okay, some of them have draw and write in the same, same very small context, but in other cases, we're catching um, items that are in the same source where draw may be in one part of the source and write in another part of the source.